okay <laughs> hello dear friends let's keep on page 43 okay monks from the temple monks monks from the temple lined the road as the procession approached once inside the family placed the coffin in a side chamber of the inner sanctum on a side chamber. Most of the friends and the family left soon after, and only a handful remained for the three days for the three day service for the dead. Since Xi Feng had decided that it would not be convenient for her to stay in the temple, she had managed to arrange to reside in a few rooms in the nearby convent. So Xi Feng, were, so this is the monk waiting outside, and this is a funeral. <coughs> So be quiet. This is a gold drum, gold drum, clearing the way. Uh, keep away, keep away, silence. Wow. Look at it. <coughs> Page 44. Bao Yu and Qin Zhong followed Xi Feng to the steamed bread covent. Man mm. steamed bread covent. At the gate, they were met by the abbeys, by the apps, by the apps, and two novices. When Xi Feng went to her room, the abbeys. The abbeys followed her by the abbeys and two novices. Abbey, Abbey must be the master of this room. The abbey, <coughs> the abbeys, abbeys followed her to ask a favor. The abbeys told Xi Feng about Miss Zhang, a woman in Chang'an who was bothered, who was betrothed, betrothed to the former city inspector's son, betrothed to the former city's in, city inspector's son. Lord Zhang had suddenly decided to cancel the engagement and find his daughter a better match but the former inspector refused to give back the dowry, the dowry and the wedding gifts, mm. and then went to see a local judge. The abbeys asked Xi Feng to write to the govern governor of Chang'an so that he could uh, persuade the former, former inspector to forget the court case. Xi Feng agreed, but only on the condition that the Zhang fam family paid her 3,000 silver teal. Silver teal. So Wang Xi Feng is making an agreement. Mm. Making an agreement. Meanwhile, Bao Yu was wandering through a dark room when he stumbled across the uh, untwined bodies of Qin Zhong and one of the novice. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Bao Yu has seen something. Oh, oh. Qin Zhong and one of the novice. Novices. The novice turned bright red in her shame and embarrassment, and they quickly run and then quickly run away. Ooh, that is kind of a disgrace. 
When Jia Zheng's birthday arrived, eunuch Jia arrived at the mansion with a decree for with a decree for him. This must be Jia Zheng. Mm. Eunuch Jia arrived, ordering him to come to the court to hear news about Yuan Chun. Yuan Chun was the eldest daughter, daughter of Jia Zheng and Lady Wang, and had already been made the official historian, and had already been made the official historian since she was bright, devoted, and upright. Jia Zheng was now given the news that she was to be made the chief secretary of the Phoenix Palace and given the title of worth and virtues consort consort du zhi du du shun only Bao Yu did not join the excitement and celebration. The young novice from the covent had arrived in the city looking for Qin Zhong. The young novice looking for Qin Zhong. When he learned that uh, when he learned what had happened, Qin Zhong's father became so angry that he collapsed into a sudden illness and died. Bao Yu and uh, Qin Zhong was filled with grief and remorse. Remorse. And he too fell ill. With all, the, all this happening around him, Bao Yu could not bring himself to be happy. Now Dai Yu arrived back at the mansion after a few months of mourning, mourning for, for her father's death. Bao Yu and Dai Yu re reunion. Bao Yu and Dai Yu's reunion was filled with tears. Bao Yu and Dai Yu reunited was filled with tears. Bao Yu tried to give the the beads he had received received from the prince of Beijing to Dai Yu, but she pushed them away, saying that she had no idea what kind of person had touched them before her. He had some beads and giving to Dai Yu. Dai Yu did not want it. Page forty six. Jia Lian had just finished eating when Jia Rong and Jia Qiang entered his room to discuss the idea of building a new court in the Rong mansion for Yuan Chun's visit to see her family. They think of uh, Maybe they are discussing about no. This is not. This is Jia Dai Yu. Okay. Qin Zhong showed no sign of recovery. This must be Qin Zhong. Mm. But Bao Yu visited him. He found his friend looking pale and ghostly, with his eyes squeezed shut and his breath deep and. Raspy, Bao Yu called out, My dearest brother, your friend Bao Yu is here. Qin Zhong's spirit heard Bao Yu, yet the ghosts guarding him would not let his spirit return to his body to speak with his friends, and instead dragged his spirit away. Bao Yu went to see his friend Qin Zhong and uh, this must be the evil spirit took Qin Zhong away. Page 
1847, when the court of Yuan Chun had been built, Jia Zheng showed his cultured companions around. They planned to make some couplets, couplets with names for each place, with which Yuan Chun could then decide upon when she visited them. At the same time, Bao Yu ran into the new garden to play, and soon found he was forced to join his father and the other men on their walk. Bao Yu was playing in this new built courtyard and garden, and uh, and he found he met with uh, with uh, his father and friends, so he had to join them. After walking down a long winding path, they came across a white rock which looked as smooth as a mirror. Is that this one? Jia Zheng asked his cultured companions if they could think of a name for the place. However, they soon realized that he really only wanted to hear Bao Yu's answer. They asked the dad, Jia Zheng was asking this and that, but actually Jia Zheng only wanted to hear Bao Yu's answer. So they only made a few feeble suggestions. When his father asked him his opinion, Bao Yu said, there is a line from an old poem that goes, a winding path leads to a secluded retreat. That would fit perfectly here. The men all agreed with his idea, yet Jia Zheng was not impressed. My son is only showing himself up by mentioning the only poem he can remember. Do not pay him any attention. Qu Jing Tong Yu, page 48. They carried on walking northward and passed through a tunnel. On the other side, they reached a clearing. On both sides stood tall pavilions with carefully carved beams and fine eaves surrounded by many trees. So they went, went, went and see carefully carved beams and fine eaves. That's so beautiful. They just zigzag, zigzag, zigzag and walk. Page 49. They then followed a snow white stream which which follow which flowed on into a small lake above the mist rising from the lake stretched a huge stone bridge that was decorated with great stone beasts great stone beasts They sat down to rest in a small pavilion in the center of the bridge. One man recalled an essay by the famous poet Ou Yang Xiu, in which he spoke of a wind pavilion, Yi Ting, wind pavilion, and suggested that as a name, and suggested that as a name for that place. Jia Zheng shook his head and drew their attention to another work by Ouyang Xiu in which the poem, poet mentioned spilling jade between two pigs. 
Jia Zheng asked Bao Yu for what he thought. Bao Yu replied, "Spilling jade, Liu Yu. Spilling jade is fine, but surely seeping fragrance would be more suitable and less obvious." Jia Zheng nodded without saying a word. Seeping fragrance, Pi Xiang. Page fifty. Once they entered, once they had across the bridge, the men approach approached a number of large, with white washed walls. White washed walls. Surrounded by green bamboo, Jia Zheng said that life would be perfect if one could sit and study at one of the windows here on a moonlight, moonlit night. He then looked at Bao Yu, waiting for a suggestion for an appropriate name, but his son only looked. At his feet, the men began to make to make their suggestions, but none of them seemed quite right to Jia Zheng. Finally, he turned to his son and asked which name he preferred. None of them are suitable for such a place, Bao Yu said. Jia Zheng sneered. And asked him why he saw that. This place is sure to be the first stop for our important guest. Therefore, perhaps we should call it where the phoenix align. Feng, where the phoenix aligns. The men all agreed. That this was an excellent choice. Feng, Feng Lian, Feng, Feng Lian, and even Jia Zheng said, "Although you are a mischievous young man, that little knowledge you possess does at least seem to be helpful." So they came to this bamboo-covered, white wall, white-washed wall house、mm. to study and see the bamboo through the window.、Mm -hmm. Page fifty-one. They walked down a hill until they reached the long vegetable field. Of a small village, surrounded by hedges and paddy stalk copings, paddy stalk copings. Yet, when one of the men suggested suggested that it could be named Apricot Village, Xinchun, Bao Yu could not hold back his contempt. That is too vulgar a name," he said. "However, there is a line in the Tang Dynasty poem which talks of a weaker gate by a steam sweet with paddy. We should call this place Paddy Sweet Cottage. Paddy." Sweet cottage. The man began to applaud, but Jia Zheng shouted at his son, "Do you really think you have memorized enough old poem to act so contemptuously in front of your elders? In front of your elders, elders." So Jia. Jia Bao Yu give another name. That's so beautiful.